The misconceptions around what this symbol indicates was enough for Chrome to decide to remove it altogether. So what does it actually mean and why do we need it? Think about the connection between your computer and the website on the other end. You're sending data across the public internet and you probably want that data to be encrypted so no one can read it. You also want to be sure that the website you're connected to is who they say they are. If you go to netflix.com, how do you actually know you're connected to Netflix and not some attacker pretending to be Netflix and steal your password? Well, when your browser says it has a secure connection, it means it's made an HTTPS connection and is using TLS. You also are guaranteed that the server you're connected to is who they say they are. At no point is this indicating that the website you're connected to is safe. In fact, it could be indicating that you've securely connected to an unsafe website you've tried to connect to. There's a critical component that makes this process possible, and that's the certificate at the other end. In order to understand how this works, we need to talk about two types of encryption. First is symmetric key encryption, or private key cryptography. For this example, say you want to send a message to your friend. You first have to meet up in private and exchange a secret key. In this video, I'll show the keys with this icon, but remember, a key is really just a string of random characters. In symmetric key encryption, the same key is used to both encrypt and decrypt the message. After agreeing on a key, you encrypt the message with the key, send the message to your friend, and they decrypt the message with the same key. The encrypted message can only be read if you have the key. This form of encryption is much faster and computationally more efficient than what we're going to look at next. This is asymmetric key encryption, also known as public key cryptography. You're going to send a message to your friend again, but rather than having to meet up and first exchange a key privately, your friend generates two types of keys, a public key and private key. They share their public key with you and anyone else, since when you encrypt using the public key, you can only decrypt using the private key. You encrypt your message with their public key and then send it to them. When it gets to your friend, they'll decrypt it with their private key. If an attacker reads the encrypted message that was sent, they won't be able to decrypt it with the public key. When you connect to a website, you ultimately establish a secure connection by using encryption to send data between the two ends. I said symmetric key encryption is faster and more efficient, so let's see if there's a way we can use that. Here, you're connecting to Netflix. You and Netflix need to share the same secret key to use for encryption. If you create a key and send it over to the server at the other end, attackers could read what the key is and use it to decrypt data you send. So how could you get this key to the server at the other end without anyone but Netflix being able to read it? To do this, Netflix generates a public and private key and sends you their public key. Remember, the public key is public and anyone can know what it is since you can only decrypt with the private key. You generate a secret key and encrypt it with the public key and send it over. If an attacker listens in, they won't be able to decrypt the message since it can only be decrypted with the private key that only Netflix knows. Once the message gets to Netflix, they decrypt it using their private key. Now, both you and Netflix are the only ones who know the message that was sent, in this case, the yellow key. You both use this yellow key for symmetric key encryption. Now, when you send data, you encrypt it using the yellow key and send it over. When they get it, they decrypt it using the same key. This process is completely secure and solves the problem of how to make an encrypted connection over the internet. But there's still one problem. How do you know that the connection at the other end is actually with Netflix? Here's an example of what could go wrong. You make a request to Netflix and ask for their public key. They send you their public key, but an attacker intercepts the request, creates their own public and private key, and then sends their public key to you. You have no idea there's a man in the middle intercepting the request. As far as you know, the public key you just received came from Netflix. You then generate a secret key, encrypt it with the public key, and send it back. The attacker intercepts the request and decrypts the message with their private key. In this example, you've created a secure connection, but it's not with who you think it is. The attacker is pretending to be Netflix, and in this setup, there's no way for you to know. When you send a request across the internet, it can be routed between many computers before it reaches the final destination. How can you be sure that when a website sends you their public key, you're actually receiving their key and not someone else's? This is where a certificate comes in. Rather than a website just sending over their public key, 
They send over their certificate. A certificate says who the subject is, contains the public key needed to make a secure connection, says who signed it, and is signed by what's called a certificate authority, or CA for short. The CA is the one who issues the certificate after validating the identity of the domain owner. Before trusting the public key in the certificate, your browser will first validate the certificate. If the signature is valid and signed by a trusted CA, you know the public key is in fact who it says it's from, and your computer will continue to create a secure connection. The CA's job is not to verify if the website is malicious or safe to access. They are simply ensuring the public and private key are given to the entity who owns the domain in signing off on the certificate. To understand how certificates are validated, we need to talk about digital signatures. A digital signature is a mathematical scheme for verifying the authenticity of a message using public key cryptography. We're not trying to encrypt the message, we just want to be able to tell if the message has been altered. First, we start with the message we want to sign. Then to sign it, the signer generates a public and private key. It then hashes the message and encrypts the hash with the private key. The signature and original message make up the digitally signed document. To validate the digitally signed document, the signature is decrypted using the public key and the message is hashed. If the message and decrypted value match, then the message hasn't been altered in transit. Remember, the message is not encrypted and can be read by anyone, but this is fine, as we're only concerned if the message has been altered or not while being sent. If an attacker changes the message in transit, the hash will then be different. And because the attacker doesn't have the private key, there's no way for them to forge the signature. Let's now see how a certificate is created. Say Netflix wants to create a certificate for their domain name. They request a certificate from a CA, such as Amazon, through AWS Certificate Manager. AWS will have Netflix prove they own the domain netflix.com. Then Amazon will generate a public and private key. The public key will go onto the certificate and the private key will go to Netflix. The Netflix domain name and issuer's name, Amazon, will go on the certificate as well. The certificate is then signed by hashing its contents and encrypting the hash with the issuer's private key. Netflix will then bind the certificate to their endpoint, and when a connection is initiated, rather than sending just their public key, they'll send the entire certificate. Let's look at an example. You make a request to Netflix and first ask for their certificate, and they send it back. Remember, when the certificate is sent over, it's not encrypted. It's simply facilitating the transfer of the public key and providing a mechanism to validate the cert hasn't been altered in transit. You aren't sure yet if it was actually sent from Netflix or if some attacker is pretending to be them, but you know if the signature is valid, then it means the claims on the certificate can be trusted. This would mean that the CA validated that they gave the certificate to Netflix and that it's Netflix's public key. To verify the signature, we need to get the public key of the issuer, as they are the ones who signed this certificate. But how do we get the public key? Well, the issuer's name actually points to a root certificate. These root certificates come pre-installed on your computer and contain the public key. A root certificate is self-signed, meaning that Amazon issued the certificate to themselves, put their public key on it, and then signed it with their private key. This key was also used to sign the certificate given to Netflix. You'll take the public key from the root certificate, then verify the signature on Netflix's cert. If it's valid, you'll trust the public key in the certificate and use that to continue the process of making a secure connection. In reality, root certificates often sign intermediate CAs, which in turn sign other certificates. This is why you'll often see a chain of certificates creating what's called a chain of trust. The process to validate the chain is the same as what I've shown here, just with more certs in between. You can find all the root certificates installed on your computer from different CAs. If you want, you can actually be your own CA and generate and sign certificates with a tool like OpenSSL. But anyone viewing a website using them will be warned that it's not trusted by a valid CA unless they have the root certificate installed on their computer. If you want to see how to get a free certificate for your website in AWS using AWS Certificate Manager, check out this next video. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks.